Hey creatives, in today's video, we'll be learning the easiest and fastest way to make the title sequence from Marvel's Loki all in Adobe After Effects. So we're going to be using a handful of expressions to create this effect. I know expressions can be a little bit intimidating, but I'll walk you through it. And if you just want the effect, we've got timestamps in the description down below, as well as the expressions. You can just copy and paste it. And better yet, you can download the project file for this project, as well as other projects from our Discord link also in the description. Let's create a new composition and we're going to make it 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames and we'll set the duration to 21 seconds, which is kind of how long the original title sequence is. Rename it to Loki title sequence and press OK. Now the first couple of things we're going to make are the little dust specks and the grain that we can actually see in the original title sequence. Create a new solid by right clicking, selecting new and solid or by using the shortcut control Y for Windows or option Y for Mac. Head over to the effects and presets panel and search for grain and we'll take the first effect here and drag it onto our solid. Use the shortcut shift and forward slash to fit the comp to your viewport and you'll notice that our grain is constrained to the square. Let's change that by heading over to the effect controls panel and changing the viewing mode from preview to final output. This grain is actually fine how it is out of the box, but we're going to make one minor adjustment. We're just going to expand the color menu and make sure that monochromatic is checked so our grain is black and white. Finally, let's rename it. With our solid selected, press enter and call it grain. Create a new solid with the shortcut we learned earlier, control Y or option Y. Head back over to the effects and presets panel and this time search for fractal noise. Drag and drop it onto our new solid. And the first thing we'll do is increase the contrast to around 650. Now let's decrease the brightness by clicking and holding and then dragging to the left, just until it starts looking like dust specks. Let's animate this with our first expression. Under the evolution option settings, we'll see a property called random seed. When we change this number, it randomly alters the way our dust specks look. And yes, we could keyframe it to animate it, but we want granular control over how this looks. Holding Alt or Option and clicking on the stopwatch icon next to random seed will open up an expression editor window. Let's get rid of this and type in time times 10 semicolon and hit play. What the time expression does is it returns a number value that reflects your current position in the timeline. So at zero seconds, it'll return zero. At 21 seconds, it'll return 21. At 11 seconds, it'll return 11 and so on. We're taking that value and we're multiplying it by 10, which basically means every one second that passes in our composition, the random seed changes 10 times. Let's rename our solid to dust specs and we'll change its blend mode to screen so it's transparent. If you don't see the blend modes, you can press the button on the bottom to change from switch view to mode view, which shows our modes. Select both our layers, right click and pre-comp and name it textures. Now, if we look at the original, we'll notice that the background changes with the text in this kind of stop motion style. Now to get that stop motion effect, head over to the effects and presets panel and search for posterize time. Drag and drop it onto our textures comp and play around with the frame rate until you find something that fits. I used 2.4. Press play, and that's our background textures done. Let's move on to the interesting stuff, actually randomizing and animating the text. Select the text tool and create four text layers spelling out Loki in caps. We're just gonna adjust these so they're centered vertically and just eyeball the space between. Select all of our text layers and pre-comp it and call it text master. Double click on the pre-comp to edit it and this is where we'll be making most of the changes. The first thing we have to do is actually find a bunch of fonts for this to actually cycle through. I suggest having 10 fonts at a minimum and having at least one old English font and one runic Asgardian looking font. I've got a list of the fonts that I used in the description down below. Once we've got our fonts, we're gonna use our second expression to randomly cycle through them. Starting with our first letter, expand the text properties and Alt or Option click the stopwatch next to the source text property to add an expression. Copy and paste the randomized text expression from the description into the expression window and increase the height by clicking and dragging so we have more space to work with. Let's go through this expression real quick. In this variable, we're going to list all the fonts that we want to use in the effect inside quotation marks and separate it by a comma. You'll need the exact name of the font, which might be a little bit different to the name that you saw when you originally downloaded it. So the easiest way to get the right one would be to click on this little play button while the expression editor is active, selecting text and font. Once you select your font and wait from the dropdowns, it will add your font name in quotation marks. Just remember to add the comma if you're adding in more fonts. The little bit on the bottom here is actually what changes our fonts. 
It basically means that for this layer, set the font style to this specific value from the text fonts variable we just created. Each one of these fonts are assigned a numerical value starting from zero and increasing one, two, three, four, and so on. So you could put a number in here between zero and nine since we have 10 fonts, but you'll notice we've got X instead. Let's look at what the X value is referring to. We've got an X value here and also one down here in this if else statement. If else statements are kind of like conditional instructions for our expression. So if this condition is met, do this. Otherwise, do this instead. Let's just start with the second X value here. This just says that value X is equal to a random number between zero and nine and math.round just makes sure that the number is a whole number rather than something like 1.5, which doesn't have a font assigned to it. This X value on the other hand is referencing a slider control called font and it also has math.round. This just means that the number that's assigned to X can be controlled with a slider. If we look just above it, we'll also see that we have a checkbox called random, except where are they? We're gonna have to add them to this layer. Head over to the effects and presets panel and search for checkbox control and drag and drop it onto our layer. Let's also search for slider control and also drag and drop it onto our layer. Let's rename this checkbox and slider controls to the names we've referenced in the expression and let's see what the slider control does first. As we increase the number on the slider, our font changes. We can actually use this to keyframe the changes in fonts, which we'll end up doing a little bit later on. Just know that if we go to a value that isn't assigned to a font, it'll choose a default font. Now, as for the random checkbox, it does just that. It changes the font randomly rather than relying on keyframes. So if the checkbox is not checked, zero being not checked and one being checked, then X's value is set by our slider and that value is passed here where it chooses the font accordingly. But if the checkbox is checked, then X's value is calculated randomly. The random function actually changes its value every single frame. So have a look at what it looks like without these three lines. That is way too fast. These three lines affect how often our random function changes its values. We're not gonna go into the math too much, but by dividing the time value by fractional number, we're basically telling the random function to change values every quarter of a frame, or half a second or whatever. Copy and paste the checkbox and slider controls on all of our text layers and do the same with the expression. And that's the hardest part done. So now if we look at the original again, we'll notice that around 13 seconds, the letters switch and then hold to reveal the title starting with L and then the K and then I and then finally the O. Also take note that the letters positions are slightly drifting in time with the beat. Let's set that up before we move on to styling our text. We'll scrub to around 13 seconds looking for the closest time the font changes. We'll duplicate our L layer by using the shortcut Control or Command D. And then with the duplicate selected, we'll use the shortcut Alt or Option and open square bracket to trim our clip to the playhead. And quickly do the same with our original except trim the opposite side using Alt or Option close square bracket instead. With our duplicate selected, we want to set the font manually. So uncheck the random checkbox and use the slider to select our font. In my case, the font that best matches the original is seven. You might have some overlap where you can see both fonts, just go in and clean that up a little bit. Go ahead and do the process with the rest of your letters. You might not get the timing perfect, but it'll still look good. Now let's add in that jitter we saw in the original by using a wiggle expression. This expression takes two values. The first value is the frequency, which determines how often the property changes. And the second value is the amplitude, which sets how much the property changes by. We'll apply this to each of our text layers, duplicates included. So let's start with L, add an expression to the position property, and let's create two values. F, which equals 1.5, semicolon and then a which equals 10 and semicolon again we're going to use another familiar function posterize time which we used earlier for the stop motion effect and we'll put our f value in there now let's add our wiggle expression type wiggle bracket and we'll call our f value and our a value close bracket and semicolon so our f and a values are setting our frequency and amplitude which we talked about before and our F value is getting affected by the posterized time effect, which allows you to alter the layer's frame rate. And that's a majority of the work done. Let's just add some styling so it looks just like the original. Let's head back to the master composition and use the shortcut home to take your playhead back to the beginning of the timeline. With our master text file selected, press S to access the scale properties. And let's change it to 80% and create a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch icon. 
press T to access the opacity property, set the opacity to zero and create a keyframe for that too. Move the playhead forward to around two seconds and change the opacity to 100% and this should automatically create another keyframe. And then move the playhead to around 17 seconds and set the scale to 110%. While we're here at the 17 second mark, the original cuts off here as the music swells. So let's do that too. Move ahead a half second or a second, select our clips and use the shortcut Alt or Option close square bracket to trim at the playhead. Now head over to the effects and presets panel and search for glow. Drag this onto our master text comp and then let's go back and search for Gaussian blur and drag this onto a comp as well. Play around with the settings until you're happy. But if you're working along, my glow is at 175 radius and my blur is at 10. Finally, let's create an adjustment layer using the shortcut Control alt y for Windows or Command option y for Mac. We'll search for the Lemetri color effect and drag and drop it onto our adjustment layer. And in the temperature properties, make it cooler by dragging it to the left. Decrease the contrast to around negative 90 and we're done. Press play and admire your work. If you've made it to the end of this, well done for sticking it out. I know this tutorial was a little bit more advanced than our normal videos, but I think it's a good thing to start learning about expressions and things like that. That's it for this video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. You know what to do to support the channel. As always, stay creative and go for broke.